dun 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 Oh, right. Hello and welcome to Merriweather's World. I am your host, Dr. Mark Merriweather Vorderbergen, creator of Foraging Texas, author of Idiot's Guide Foraging, and general road warrior. All right. Hey, hello, Michelle. Yes, this is this is safe as anything I do tonight. So, uh, how's it going? I'm back home. Wow. Uh, race up, take care of mom, race home, leave mom in the care of my brothers. Uh, so be it. <laughs> Is anybody out there? I don't know. Okay. So, hey, hey, uh, Vas Va Va Vasquez. <laughs> I don't know how to say her name. I'm sorry. But with a name like Vorderbruggen, I feel okay with that. Hey, good morning, Kyle. Hey, John Mark. Hey, Kathleen. Yep, home sweet home. Uh, wow. Long, long trip, but uh, easy trip. Way easier than I expected. Yeah, so she started the chemotherapy on Friday, uh, is starting to getting the bad side effects uh, yesterday. So with the mouth sores and some of the hair falling out and things like that. Um, so be it. Hey, thank you. Thank you for the prayers, everyone. Uh, excuse me. Much needed. Oh, so I'm back in Texas. I have my Minnesota shirt, but my Texas beer. Okay. <laughs> As usual, uh, quick, uh, some, some homekeeping or homekeeping, housekeeping stuff. Uh, of course, for those of you who are new here, uh, may not know who I am. Like I said, I'm the creator of Foraging Texas. So let me throw up a link to that with a uh, website. It's even though it has the name Texas in the title, uh, the 225 plants that are currently on there and more always being added uh, can actually be found all over the country. Like I, said, I was just up at my folks place in Minnesota, getting pictures of a bunch of them. Uh, just Basically, the summertime weeds up in the northern part of the country are the wintertime weeds down here in the south. Oh, Kathleen, funny story about that. Uh, to do uh, get a good night's sleep. So I actually kind of did get a good night's sleep. I slept for almost seven hours last night at a roadside rest area in Kansas. I'll talk more about that as we get into how to be a road warrior. Uh, a few other things. Um, Let's see. So uh, right now, the upcoming classes won't be on till this fall, but you can check it out uh, coming up there. Um, so uh, once the cool weather arrives again, I'll be teaching all over Texas uh, just about every damn weekend. So you can see the upcoming classes there. Uh, hey, Dan. Uh, let's see. You have uh, drank my first tincture of the smaller stash bowl one today. Uh, when in doubt, pine needles, vitamin C. Uh, there's a lot of things out there right now. Oh, uh, Spanish moss or the ball moss for the anti-cancer fighting uh, properties. Okay, but continuing on with the housekeeping. Uh, those of you, you can also find me on YouTube both the donut shop at the beginning of the world and of course to Merryweather's world and a whole bunch of other stuff, video from classes, uh, emergency survival, prepper type stuff. Um, it's all there. Uh, okay. Oh, and of course, uh, again, for those of you who have been helping me get a new computer system, good news. It should arrive July 13th, according to Apple, my new computer will be here and I will be able to rock. And by rock, I mean do all sorts of more plant stuff much quicker than before. Um, but those of you who want to continue to help keep Foraging Texas alive and running, uh, there's a donate link there. Um, oh, okay. So let me do this quick. So, of course, you can... Get my book, Idiot's Guide Foraging. Uh, just a reminder, I don't get any royalties from this. The only way I get money is if you buy it from the specific link. Did it go up? 
Uh, error. Okay, if you buy it from the specific link I just posted, in which case Amazon gives me 74 cents. So that's pretty cool. Okay, other. Uh, okay, we have, I don't have one on, but if you want to wear your foraging Texas gear, uh, first you have to buy the foraging Texas gear, and you can get that from Cafe Press. They got a whole line of t-shirts and, and, and things like that. Uh, super fan Kathleen uh, got a whole bunch of that stuff recently, so she's rocking, looking like an awesome plant star. Okay, <laughs> I'm just babbling here in case you haven't figured that out. Okay, the Wazoo Survival uh, Bandana. Hey, Julie, the Wazoo Survival Bandana. Uh, like I said, if you buy this, this is something uh, I and Wazoo Survival. And Nicole uh, Appellion and Sam Thayer worked on to give you the 12 most useful edible and medicinal plants in North America. Uh, you can find these things all over the North American continent. And actually, a lot of them are even available in Europe. I guess I could hold this open. Um, you know, that's the thing. A lot of the, uh, the weeds here in North America were actually... Uh, vegetable or garden or medicinal plants over in Europe or Africa or China that made their way here. But uh, that's why you can find a lot of these in other countries too. So good thing to have. And I will say if you buy it, they give me money too, which is cool. I think it's 10% uh, of the sales price. Okay. But wait, there's more, as you often hear me say, uncommon bees. The bee people you should love. They currently now have over 60 different infused honeys. My personal favorite is the Buzz Honey, which is infused with the taurine and uh, green coffee beans. Um, what else was in there? I guess that was the main thing. Yeah. So it's basically an uh, energy drink in honey form without all the sugar that you get in a well, I mean, technically, it's honey is calories, but it's not the refined, nasty sugar. It's the good, healthy sugar of honey. So always a good thing there. Uh, ooh, ooh, okay, good, good. So a few more things. I know you all sit through this, but thank you for sitting through this, and hopefully some of you buy it. Herbs uh, up in Cushing, Texas, Ricardo Shilly Shally here. You see him often. Uh, tribe member, uh, he keeps me set or uh, filled with my uh, battle mage tea, which I use to basically survive and all the crazy things I'm doing. Uh, and then he recently made me a uh, it's basic, basically a, like an anti cyst uh, cream to rub on a cyst I have that's causing some problems. So there's that. And then, of course. Camp Craft Outdoors, maker of fine. If you are going off the trail, you need their bags and haversacks and, and things like that because, now I hope this works. People have been having problems with this link, but it worked for me. Uh, but if you want canvas and brass instead of nylon and plastic, Camp Craft Outdoors is the, the bag maker for you. Uh, everything is made here in the U.S. by hand and then hand waxed to give it the waterproofness that you need also when you're out there. Hey, uncommon bees, just talking about you, man. Ooh, thanks again. Oh, so I, uncommon bees uh, shipped, like Russ shipped me a bunch of different medicinal honeys when I was up in Minnesota. He sent them up to me there and a uh, self-heal tincture. So thank you, uncommon bees. I really, 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 really appreciate that. Whew. Okay, uh, let's see. Oh, and of course, uh, fear and dread. The oh, the big jar is in the kitchen. Uh, I'm answering on coming bees. Yeah, I got it over by the coffee pot because what's better than herbal coffee than herbal coffee with uncommon bees buzzed honey in it? Anyway, that was my invitation to me in the morning after drinking my coffee, which I guess you all see because most of you join me for the donut shop at the beginning of the world. Okay, 
So Fear and Dread, shout out, shout out to my favorite store over in Vidor, Texas, suppliers of all sorts of first aid kits, survival gear, guns, ammo, all that sort of thing. Like I said, I always have the individual patrol officer kit with me. Uh, it's basically designed for large trauma, uh, like a car accident or you know a, a chainsaw accident, things like that. So it's a tourniquet, the gloves, uh, sort of gauze, things like that. So it's always packed up and ready to go and sterile and you know basically sits in my car and my bag everywhere that i'm really at Whew, okay you know i'm also going to drink some water okay is that everyone that's everyone okay thank you all sponsors for helping me do all this and hopefully people will understand how important you are to me and so they will make sure you survive by buying your stuff too Got that, people? Buy their stuff. Okay. Uh, yeah. Hi, Kelly. Yep. I'm home. I'm home. I'm here in Texas. Uh, like I said, I, I, I drove up there in 18 hours and 50 minutes, hung out with my mom and dad, my brothers. Uh, my older brother is down from Alaska. He will be there until the 12th or the 13th. Um, my plan is basically every time he calls and said, hey, I need money to get this for mom and dad. It's like, okay, here you go. Here's money because I'm not there and I feel horribly guilty. Um, but I'm here. Uh, basically had to come home because theoretically, I'm still waiting for confirmation. But theoretically, the first batch of the Medicine Man plant company, the immune pill, was made today. Dun, dun, dun. So hopefully that is true. Because <sighs> then now everything is going to go crazy with Medicine Man. Um, and I'll, oh, I'll just put that up here. In case you don't know Medicine Man, that is Medicine Man Plant Co.com. That is the company I joined in January to bring ancient plants to you for modern issues. There's a number of things going on there. Yeah, the immune pill. The immune pill, the liver pill, the blood pressure pill, uh, the brain pill. <laughs> Funny, I had a pause there. And then, of course, the male libido pill. I need a beer. Mm. Okay. So that's everything that's going on. Now let's talk about you know what I'm going to talk about tonight, and that is the art of world. Blah, blah, blah. That is the art of road warriorness. How to go you know a thousand miles a day, um, days in a row. How to drive, 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 drive. And so tonight I'm going to give you the tips I've developed through years of of cross country driving, like from here to home or an oil field, or, you know, everywhere else, or classes, and things like that. Now, um, most of these tips, I'm going to start out with just a single person in the car who is trying to get a long, long, long distance, because the ways of doing that are much different than doing it if you have other people in the car, especially young people in the car. So the main focus tonight is if you or maybe one other person who is very similar to you or very willing to put up what you're about to put them through, uh, sort of car trips. So trying to get from point A to point B a thousand miles away in a few days. Uh, Beth, uh, lung pill. So that is in the works, but that we only had the money to make the first five pills. And then once those are sold, we can make those five and plus like three or four more. And then once those are sold, we can keep growing. So uh, just to uh, put this up here, just a side note on the medicine man, the more you buy, the more I can make. Just something, <laughs> the way business works. Okay. Um, so the first thing I want to cover, well, let's put this up here. Uh, you know I have my Amazon store, so I did do some modifications to the road preparedness. I added a few more things. Uh, originally, it was for basic, you know, just what you should have in your car all the time. 
uh, whenever you're traveling in case you have a breakdown or things you need to get your car you know, from point A to point B. And then I added a few more things tonight. But um, so driving across country really fast and really cheaply. Uh, luckily right now, gas is cheap. I spent around $120 in gas to go from Texas to my folks' place up in Minnesota and then another 120. So all said and done, uh, $240 in gas, which is, is pretty good. Um, if you have a more fuel efficient, fuel efficient car, of course, you'll do better. I was averaging 18.8 .8 miles per gallon in my forerunner. Okay. So the first thing is where do you stop to rest? So I like to, if it's by me alone, I don't want to waste money on a hotel room. So luckily, uh, there's the term called boondocking. B-O-O-N-D-O-C-K-I-N-G, boondocking. And what this is, it's, it's basically camping a night for free somewhere not on your property, not on state park property, anything like that. So different areas, secret areas where you can boondock. And one of the biggest ones actually, whoops. Oh, where did it go? Ah, did I lose everything? Oh, no. Okay, there it is. Sorry. I'm okay. Okay. Uh, so Walmart. A long time ago, Walmart figured out that people with RVs, recreational vehicles, have money and spend money and usually need lots of little things at the end of each day because they don't have the space to keep all the food and everything they need in their RV. So a long time ago, a number of Walmarts realized we want RVers to park in our parking lot overnight. So the Walmart locator, and let me let me share the screen here. Um, let's see, application window. Please work. Okay. So the uh, Walmart locator, what this is, is a directory of Walmarts that allow you to, you know, park overnight and sleep in your vehicle uh, unmolested. So there are a number of rules like uh, stay only one night. Rule number two, obtain permission from a qualified individual. Eh, more and more, um, not really going on. Okay, this one, number four. Yeah, you don't set up your barbecue grill. You don't set up your awning. You don't set up your fire pit. You uh, just kind of pull into the parking lot and go to sleep. Um, but what's cool about this website, and I put the link there. Did I put the link there? Yeah. Is we scroll down. Okay, whoops. And here we have a map of all the Walmarts in, well, the U.S. The green ones are where people have been allowed to spend the night. Oops. Sorry, I'm going to make ah sounds. And then the red dots, like a red dot here, those are Walmarts where they were not allowed to spend the night. So if you are looking, there are Walmarts everywhere. Um, if you are driving cross country anywhere, you know, and you see there's a lot of Walmarts and usually they're in the bigger towns along the freeways and so forth. Uh, so it's a good place just to pull over and spend the night, you know, look to make sure it's green, uh, ideally go in and buy something, um, you know, talk to the manager if you want, but usually it's okay. Now keep in mind you, know, you don't want to park in some urban area where there's lots of crime and stuff like that. It's You're better off finding a Walmart in one of the smaller towns along your route and spending the night there. So, but Walmart, or yeah, walmartlocator.com, you can go to this map and then you can like make a list. Let's see, like in Missouri, do, 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 click on the green one. So Clinton, phone number, overnight parking, yes. Latitude, longitude, and then you can even send this to your phone. Uh, you can do, yeah, 
basically make a list of the Walmarts. You know, if you kind of have an idea how far you're going to get in a day, and then you can kind of find a Walmart somewhere uh, that allows the overnight parking in that area of where you're going to end up. So very, very useful. Um, like I said, they, they like it if you buy something, even a snack or something like that. Keep in mind, you cannot buy beer or alcohol and then drink it in the parking lot. So that's not allowed. Uh, but yeah, great, great place just to spend the night. Like I say, you can see just how many of them are there. It's like a majority of them. Sorry, I know everyone's going to get like motion sickness, but lots and lots and lots of Walmarts allow parking in their uh, their parking lot overnight. Um, not the quietest place. Uh, what I recommend also doing is if you see an RV or two already there, kind of park near them, but not right between them or anything like that. But, you know, there's safety in numbers. Um and then everything uh, it works out well that way. Okay, so Walmart. A great place to spend a free night. Just if you're going to camp in your car, camp at Walmart. Okay, the next one, and let me bring this up. So rest areas. Interstate rest areas. And this is a little interesting. So... The interstate rest area, they have whoops, a similar sort of thing here. Where is the map? Interstate rest areas. Okay. They had it. They had a map. Let me refresh. But the uh where is well. So here's the thing, uh, interstate, rate, inter, uh, interstate rest areas, it kind of depends on the state if they allow overnight parking. Uh, some states allow as little as three hours of parking. Some go uh, overnight allowed. So if you go to the interstate overnight parking rules, you can see like Illinois, it's a three hour stay limit. No overnight parking. Indiana, no overnight parking. Uh, Iowa, overnight parking is limited to one night, uh, no camping or sleeping outside the vehicle. So you do have to sleep in your vehicle. Kentucky, four-hour stay. Um, where was Texas? Do -do -do, scroll down to T. So in Texas, you can stay up to 24 hours. Uh, so by camping, it means you, know, you can't set up a tent in the yard. You have to sleep in your vehicle. Um, a lot of roadside west rest areas, well, pretty much all of them have picnic tables. Most of them have charcoal grills, but who wants to carry charcoal with them? You can just fire up a camp stove and cook stuff uh, there um, on what, excuse me, one of the picnic tables. But I recommend reading up on the states you're passing through. What are the rules for the roadside rest areas? which ones allow overnight uh, parking and which ones don't. And then, of course, most of them have bathrooms and things like that. Um, so it's interesting. The farther east you go, it seems like the more they are against you spending any time there, I guess, because they're so densely packed. They don't want people just camping out and living at the rest areas. But as you go more west and through the Midwest, uh, then they become a lot more lenient. So Walmarts and roadside rest areas are both areas uh, where you can, you know, at least either camp out, well, not camp out, but sleep in your vehicle overnight or at least for a few hours. Uh, so uh, is this looking okay, Miranda, North Carolina? North Carolina, there is a four-hour stay limit, no overnight parking or camping. So you would have to set your alarm clock for three hours and 45 minutes, I guess, and only sleep there. Um, but definitely as you get out, like New Mexico, 24-hour stay limit, but no sleeping outside the vehicle. So, oh, okay. Uh, all right. Oh, so let me just bring up 
So bunny, dangerous unless you're packing. So that brings up the next thing I want to talk about. And that is, do, 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 oops, where did it go? Uh, oh, okay, sorry, hold on. Uh, text, oops, Texas CCL reciprocity. Okay, so where you can and can't carry if you have a Texas concealed handgun license. Um, so Texas has agreements with a bunch of states. These are all blue just because you have to click on the individual states to see if there is an agreement with that state or if the state has what's called constitutional carry. And if it has constitutional carry, you can carry a gun on you. Uh, you know, Second Amendment rules, freedom of speech, freedom of uh, you know, all the other <laughs> things. Wow, had a Joe Biden minute there. Um, so, so like Minnesota, for instance, uh, there used to be an agreement between Minnesota and Texas. Uh, there no longer is. Minnesota uh, nullified it. They decided they don't think Texans um, are good enough people to carry a, a, a license um, or carry a, a handgun using their Texas license there. Uh, as opposed to Iowa, which says, yeah, you got Texas, you're good. In fact, Iowa allows uh, anyone that has a concealed handgun license from any state can carry in Iowa. So there's a, an agreement there. Um, keep in mind, so if you are in, you have, say, a Texas C, uh, concealed handgun license, if you're in another state that does allow you to uh, carry because you have the, the Texas CC, uh, CCL, you have to follow the CCLs of that state, though. So you have to follow the Iowa rules. You have to follow the Nevada rules. So you need to know what those rules are because they, they can be and often are different than the Texas rules. But there are a number of states that have an agreement with Texas where you are capable of uh, carrying. So you just have to make sure the state has an agreement and what the rules of that state are. Okay, another quote. Did I have a, I thought I had a link to that. Yeah, okay. So here's the link to, to that. Okay. Another cool thing, uh, especially if you're in Harris County, the Harris County Toll Road, the easy tag you have, now works on Kansas and Oklahoma toll roads too. So when you go zipping through and you get like the, uh, I don't know if you can see it here, the Kansas City Toll Road uh, ticket, uh, and when you get to the other end, you just, uh, you just drive through. You don't have to go through the cash thing. You just go through the, I have a, you know, a tag sort of thing. So that's in Kansas and Oklahoma. Um, there are also some, supposedly some states out on the East coast, but that's still a little iffy. Um, but Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas, the easy tag works in all of them which is really nice if you're driving up you know, to Oklahoma or Kansas. It works for me anyway on the way to uh, Minnesota. The Indian Turnpike. So if you're going through Oklahoma on the east side, there is the Indian Turnpike. Turnpike. I'm not positive if it works on that. So, uh, but the Oklahoma State toll roads, the Easy Pass does. Okay, and drink. Oh, this looks interesting. Look. So Donna Siemens says, my son helped develop an app called Camp, uh, Camp, in, Camp Appendium. It might be useful. I haven't really used it, so I'm not sure what it all encompasses. He and his wife travel full-time, restore. Oh, vintage Airstream. Cool. Uh, there's also an app called All Stays which is $10 on the Apple App Store. I think it's also available for Android. But it lists 
all the free parking, Walmarts and rest site areas and a bunch of other places too. Um, the only two I really explore are the Walmart and the roadside rest areas. I find that most state parks, especially now, you need advanced uh, reg registration, things like that. You got to pay. Walmart, you don't have to pay. You may end up spending 30 bucks in Walmart. Uh, oops, <laughs> you know, but so be it. But uh, Campendium, that looks cool. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Here's another good one. So if you have a uh, disabled veteran license plate, uh, license plate with the DV in it, uh, a lot of toll roads are free. I'm not sure about all states, uh, Kathleen, but that might be something worth looking into. Okay, so that kind of covers camping and the driving. I want to talk now uh, about some of the things in the car that you should have uh, that work. So one of the big things when you are traveling is keeping things organized. You know, don't have stuff loose in your car. Have things in boxes. I mean, I'm sure everyone right now has a ton of Amazon boxes around. Uh, so again, this is like if you're driving alone, uh, like on the seat next to you, you want the box with the snacks and the drinks. And uh, here's the thing about if you're driving a long, long, long distance, it's best to be slightly dehydrated and somewhat constipated. Slightly dehydrated and somewhat constipated. If you plan on driving a long, long distance, you don't want to have to stop. So... Uh, like if I'm driving up to Minnesota, doing it in a day, I allow myself three waters and a five-hour energy drink as needed. Well, one during the, the, the 18 hours. And then I do have, in the case of an emergency, the Rockstar energy drink. But, you know, three waters and that's it for the, you know, per thousand miles, basically. Um, then as far as food goes... Uh, things low in fiber, high in protein, basically. Uh, those of you military members who know about MREs and the effect they have on your, your bowels, that's the sort of food you want. <laughs> so you, know, you definitely, uh, like beef jerky is good. Uh, one issue with jerky is it is somewhat salty, so you're going to need the water. Also keep in mind that protein requires water to digest. So one of the good ways of ending up dehydrated uh, so you don't have to pee as much is, you know, eat jerky without quite not enough water to digest it all. So you'll use up all the water in your body um, and then just sip, you know, occasionally. I like the five-hour energy drinks uh, just because small volume. I find they give me that energy boost. They are caffeine free. They're they're like niacin and a bunch of other things. Um, they don't have the the immense amount of volume that the average energy drink has. So you know it's easier on your bladder that way. So yeah, you know, just a little bit of water, and if necessary, you know a little thing to keep you going. You know about mile seven hundred. When you're just starting to get a little tired, yeah, that's when the five-hour energy comes. Uh, yeah, empty gallon jugs. <laughs> so uh, in that case, so the pee bottle. If you go to Goodwill or Salvation Army, you can get all the liter bottles, the Nalgene, you know, BPA-filled bottles you want for like fifty cents a piece. Uh, a couple of those make excellent pee bottles. Something to keep in mind. Whoops. Uh, okay, so food, water. Yeah, food, a little bit of food, not much. Uh, like I said, mainly protein. Uh, you, like I said, your goal is to not have to stop for any reason. You just want to go. So I probably should stop saying goal. Now, uh, eventually, you're going to get to, you know, the Walmart, the rest area. You're going to camp. You're not well. You're going to sleep in your vehicle. You can't camp outside. Um, this is where it's good to have, 
like your toiletries bag there, you know, ideally in your in your uh, box with the the water bottles and the rock star and some beef jerky rather than tucked away in a suitcase because you don't have to go and dig in your suitcase and pull out your toiletries bag and close everything up and do all that. Um, I just find that annoying. Maybe you, maybe you're okay with that, but usually suitcases get, you know, buried under stuff, especially if you're coming back from somewhere after a week away and you get all sorts of extra crap in your car. Um, so keep the toiletries there, you know, readily accessible your toothbrush, your toothpaste, medicines, anything like that. Um, they don't like it if you brush your teeth in like Walmart bathrooms or rest area bathrooms. So this is where you have to use a little bit of discreet. And in one of your bottles, you've poked a hole. Oh, I see you. So this is, you know, you use that to squirt on your your toothbrush, brush your teeth, you know, discreetly spit, you know, out in the grass somewhere, you know, go away from everyone where no one's going to walk, please, uh, you know, into a bush or something like that. Rinse your mouth out. And then you use the squirt bottle just to, you know, rinse off your toothbrush really well. And then you put it back in the holder, flick it around a bit and stick it back in your toiletries thing. So a little squirt bottle works really, really good there. Okay. Uh, I need a drink. Um, medicine. Oh, okay. Uh, where did I put them? I had them here. Whoops. Shoot. Oh, well. Uh, another thing that really works well, especially and again at Walmart or at a rest site area are little earplugs. So you can't hear anything and uh, a sleep mask because there's all sorts of trucks bright lights. I mean, most of these parking lots are extremely well lit, which is good for a security reason. So you'll want some sort of uh, eye shield, blackout, you know, sleep mask and earplugs to drown out the noise of the traffic and the trucks and stuff. You'll find a lot of trucks because they are so really amazingly efficient with diesel that they'll just run. They'll let it run all night long to keep their air, uh, AC and everything going. So the truckers are nice and comfortable in there, but then their trucks are going rumble, 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 rumble all night long. So it's going to be noisy at, you know, especially at the truck stop. There's trucks coming and going, cars coming and going, dogs yapping. So earplugs, sleep mask works really well uh, to block that out. Another thing you want to do, and uh, I don't have, well, they're over in the living room. Uh, so you want the, you know, some sort of windshield, block you know like down here pretty much everyone has the the sunshade that goes in the front window but you also want to like cut out some cardboard or cut out some more of that sunshade stuff for the side windows um, that gives you some privacy uh, and also helps block out light and sound but in that case it's mainly for privacy especially if you're a female traveling alone unfortunately so the less people can see you the less trouble you're going to have so something to cover the windows so people can't see in and see you asleep there. Very, very, very important. Uh, another thing, in the hot months, it's going to be hot. And you probably can't afford to let your car run all night for the AC. So you're going to want... Some sort of fan going... I love Goodwill. You can see I, I, I get a lot of stuff from Goodwill. So this is a just a fan, 12-volt fan that plugs into your cigarette lighter. Of course, if you're plugging it into your cigarette lighter, then you're using your car battery, which may not be a good idea because you don't want to drain your car battery. So um, to run the fan and to charge up any electronics, ooh, I have a battery pack. Now, this thing is older than the kids, so like 18 years old. Um, I've had to replace the actual battery in this twice, but one of the nice things about this one is that it is rechargeable. Hello. Speaking of kids. That might be a big fan, but I'm his biggest fan. 
No, I think Kathleen is my biggest fan. She no, actually, is. Tina. Who are we kidding? Tina. <laughs> Tina is the biggest fan. Sorry, Kathleen. You're you're just a redheaded second. You know, like they say, the redheaded stepchild. No. Anyway. No. I love you, Miss Kathleen. She does. Sometimes I hear her whisper your name in her sleep. Oh, oh, what? what? <laughs> No. Joking, <laughs> but yeah. So some sort of battery, you know, spare battery. Uh, there's a whole bunch, and I put a, a link in the. If you go to the Amazon store, Road Preparedness. Um, oh yeah, so Academy sells battery powered tent fans. Um, I find the 12 volt ones do a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Ricardo, uh, I'm see, sorry. See, I love you too. Don't worry. <laughs> see, the, the problem with Ricardo, at least for me. Is your male? Uh, you know, the, the I'm sorry, the female fans always come first. Sorry, guys. Don't tell mom. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, the you know a, a battery like this, this will run the fan, you know, all night long. I put a link. They they make smaller ones now. They make lithium ones that are you know slightly oh larger than you know a, a, a thing of Velveeta cheese. Um. But yeah, some sort of fan blowing on you, really, 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 really useful. The also nice thing with the the uh, the battery backup type thing is you have a battery to jumpstart your car if needed. Hello, I'm home. I think you missed me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but she had all of you. Thank you all for keeping her entertained so I didn't have to. Reading so, Tuesdays with Maury with me. Yeah, cool. Uh, let me just put this up here again. So the link to the... Uh, Amazon. So if you go to the Amazon store, it has all these things. Um, so a fan blowing you on is great in the summer. Another thing I have, and oh, there's where everything is. Okay. So I'm lucky. My vehicle has a sunroof. And so one of the things I did is I got some mosquito netting. So this one says top, side, so side windows, and rear window. And so I can roll down the windows a bit, and then with these magnets, stick the mosquito neck, <laughs> necking, mosquito netting over the sunroof and over the windows so that the you know I can get ventilation, I can get a draft, but I don't get bugs. <laughs> so, be quiet, Ricardo. Uh, anyway, so this this is again this is something an idea I stole from someone else, but some mosquito netting uh, stuck to your car over your windows with magnets, and these are just some super NICA whatever magnets. Um, very hard to get apart, but stick really well to the car so now you have the ability to have ventilation uh without bugs and then this is something again i keep in a like a, i don't know what the, i got this was at another salvation army find uh but i keep this all readily available so i just grab it set it up on my car and then i go to sleep ah, get that all back in there oops that was the zipper, not me. Like any time you take a tent out of a bag and then try and get it back in. There we go. All nice. So mosquito netting and the magnets are there. So really useful. Like I said, uh, ventilation is really important, especially, uh, well, you know, if it's hot out, you got the fan, but you're breathing, you're breathing out moisture. Uh, if it cools down some, the inside of your vehicle is going to be covered with condensation uh, just from the act of you breathing all night. Oh, side note. So in case you're wondering how well all this stuff works, uh, at 9.30, I pulled into Matfield Green service area in the middle of Canvas on the Canvas uh, Kansas Turnpike. Um, got some French fries, talked to mom, uh, mom and dad and talked to Kavan and the, the girls. Uh, 10.30, I had everything set up, closed my eyes. Uh, my plan was to wake up. Yeah, I figured maybe I'd wake up around 2.30, 3.30 and start the drive. I woke up at 5.30 in the morning. I slept like seven hours <laughs> in my car, just, ah, uh, 
<laughs> totally zonked. So uh, it, it works well. Oops, why is this? I had my hand on the keyboard. I'm erasing a comment that would have been in play. Uh, so Salvation Army. <laughs> I think it was a shaving kit. It was a buck ninety nine. I I am I don't get anything full price. I always go to Salvation Army, Goodwill stores, things like that. Um, but I think this was a shaving kit. The netting was from Academy in their camping section. It was uh, they make this uh, cot netting. It's a big uh, rectangular thing that fits over a uh, a cot, and then I just cut the pieces out of it to cover the windows. And then I ordered the magnets uh, online. But yeah, it's nice to have it just there rather than tucked away in all my emergency gear. When I get to a place, I've, it's because I've been driving for like 17 hours and I just want to stop and pull my stuff out and throw it up. So, but yeah, uh, if you don't go to Salvation Army Goodwill, you should. You get a lot of stuff there. Holy, oh wow. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I thought I'd gone 45 minutes over. Okay panic attack. Uh, another thing. So we talked about the eye. We talked about the ear. We talked about ventilation and cool. Um, let's talk next about warmth. So if you are sleeping in your car seat, and a side note, uh, I sleep in the passenger side rather than the driver's side because in the passenger side, there aren't the pedals in the know in there so i get that much more leg room that i can stretch out put the seat all the way back and in the forerunner the front seats recline almost all the way back it's like a, a really comfortable dentist chair sort of thing which is probably a weird analogy um so staying cool during the summer use a fan staying warm in the cold weather that gets a little trickier so let's talk about how do you stay warm? One of the main things I found personally for me, sleeping bags do not work. Trying to get into a sleeping bag inside a car on a car seat doesn't work. So I go with different quilts depending on how hot it is. Um, so just pulling out of my Campcraft Outdoors uh, tubular bag. So I use what's called a snug pack jungle quilt. Uh, it's called a jungle quilt because it's quick drying and uh, it has a water repellent side and then a comfy soft side and then it's filled with insulation. If you're familiar, Ricardo, you probably know the Wooby, the military poncho liner. It's like a Wooby on steroids. So uh, this it's really nice and it's nice and warm. And if you sweat or perspire, it dries really quickly and doesn't stink. And you can bundle yourself up all nice and tuck it under you and under your feet. And it's actually surprisingly warm. Now, if it is zero out, you may want two of these or you may even want to invest in an actual quilt, but definitely blankets and quilt. Wow, this is really warm. I'm gonna take this off. Uh, blankets and quilt are definitely the way to go when you're sleeping in a car rather than uh, a sleeping bag. Getting in and out of the sleeping bag in a car is really, really, really tough. They do make heated blankets, which are really nice. That just plug into the, you know, the, the, the cigarette lighter or the power outlet in your car. But again, if you are parked, a lot of times the outlet, the power outlet, uh, is not live unless the key is in and turned. And you really don't want to sleep that way. So that's another reason for having the battery backup because most of the outlets in the car or vehicle are not live when the key is off. So yeah, Wooby or the Jungle Pack works really good. A few other tricks, things that help you stay warm when you're sleeping in the car. Face mask and a hat. You definitely want a hat to maintain, you know, you don't want to lose heat from your head. And then a face mask, you know, so just your eyes, you know, like a baklava or something like that uh, will help keep you warm. Mittens rather than gloves. You don't want your fingers separated. You want mittens where your fingers are together. 
multiple layers. So instead of one thick, heavy layer, you want multiple layers because each layer helps trap another layer of air, and air is the best insulator. The layer closest to you, you want some sort of quick dry microfiber. You want to avoid cotton. Cotton, as you sleep, if you sweat and you just even just condensation and exhale, it gets damp. And then that dampness, if it's against your skin, is going to suck the heat right out of you. So you want a microfiber that wicks it away uh, from your skin, wicks any uh, perspiration, sweat away, and delivers it to what's hopefully going to be the wool layer. Wool is very, very, very good at taking the moisture then and wicking it out away from the body. Uh, yep. Uh, I grew up in Minnesota, so I mean, just waiting for the bus, you know, to get to you know third grade, you dressed like this. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So multiple layers, loose. You don't want anything tight, especially around the waist. So you want to, you know, when you're ready to go to the sleep, undo your belt, un, you know, even unsnap your pants, you know, let it all hang out, figuratively speaking because you don't want anything to uh, interfere with the circulation. If you have a set of old socks that like the elastic is kind of given out, but they're still intact, switch into those. The socks you've been wearing while you're driving and so forth have probably collected some moisture from sweat. They're going to be wet. You don't want wet socks, even if they're just, you know, damp from, from foot sweat. Uh, you don't want tight fitting socks. So you want an old pair of thick, loose fitting wool socks. If you can find wool socks in a size larger than your feet, like I have a size 13 foot, which is pretty much the maximum size they make wool socks. But if you are a mere mortal with mortal sized feet, uh, you know, get a pair of socks that's like one or even two sizes bigger than you and wear those uh, when you're sleeping in your car, and it'll be much better. Ooh, this sounds cool. Uh, Sister-in-law makes quilts out of Pendleton Woods wool scraps and backs them with... Now, okay, I want one of those quilts. Let me know what I need to do, Cleo, to get one of those quilts, because that sounds absolutely amazing. Fleece is another good uh, first layer for uh, a light blanket, because fleece, again... Uh, draws the moisture away, quick drying, uh, fairly warm, but you want multiple layers. That's why, like the jungle blanket, it has the hollow fill insulation. It has, you know, basically the insulation that is in sleeping bags, and then multiple layers also to trap air. So that sounds cool, though. But Pendleton wool, nice. Ooh, mohair socks. That would be a good one. Yeah. The nurse says, keep your feet dry. Cold feet, usually due to damp feet uh, and poor circulation. Like in my case, you know, being 6'5 with my feet, you know, in the next state over, uh, it's very, very important that I use loose fitting socks whenever I'm camping or, you know, ready to sleep for the night someplace where I have to wear socks because I don't want anything restricting the circulation. You'll end up with colder feet because the blood isn't flowing down there. If it's really cold, a uh, trick in Minnesota, you rub your feet with some cayenne pepper. That causes uh, the capillaries to dilate. So the capillaries get bigger, so more blood flows there, uh, bringing more warmth. Oh, yes. Pea coats, really nice. Okay, I need some Texas beer. Mmm. Yeah, diabetic socks. You know, anything that a lot of times you hear people say when you're driving or flying, wear the compression socks to avoid the deep vein thrombosis stuff. Um, but in the case of when you're stopped for the night and just are going to go to sleep in cold weather, loose fitting socks are what you want. Aha, uh -huh. yep, rule in the morning army change your socks always. Um, more information than you all probably want to know. 
But when I'm out camping three, four days, it's probably the same set of underwear. But I can guarantee you I have a different pair of socks for every day. All right. Ooh, foot powder. Yeah. Foot powder is excellent for making sure your feet stay dry. Another good idea. Um, I like the gold, uh, gold bond medicated foot powder. It has some menthol and some other nice kind of cooling. It feels really nice on the feet, basically. But yeah, foot powder, even talcum powder. Talcum powder, though, has some bad rep now with the asbestos thing. Um, so that's why I like the, the gold bond. But yeah, foot powder, anything that keeps your feet dry will help, too. Good one, Curtis. Thank you. Okay, what else? Mohair, mohair is awesome. Okay, so here is another hunter's trick. Many a Minnesota winter, fall hunter, deer hunter uh, has a set of pantyhose stashed away somewhere and no one comments on it. Because, yeah, pantyhose, they're a great way of adding another layer of insulation and warmth to your outfit. So, yeah, Ricardo, that, that's, you're absolutely right. Uh, like I said, there are many a deer hunter out there that can you know, sit on the stand in 12 degree Fahrenheit weather for eight hours, you know, because they, they, you know, bought a pair of pantyhose. <laughs> oh, Under Armour is, Under Armour is good. Under Armour is really good at wicking the moisture away. That's kind of what it was designed for. So yes, as the base layer. And this really works good. Uh, if it's hot, you want the, 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 the microfiber to wick the sweat away and you'll feel cooler. And if you're really cold, you want to just get that moisture away from you so you, you don't freeze to death that way. So one of the things uh, when I'm traveling, so again, more information than you need. Uh, I have the travel underwear that is microfiber, uh, loose fitting boxer style. Uh, so it wicks any groin moisture away. Let's just put it out there. Um, and then the shirts I wear when I'm traveling are all like the microfiber, quick drying athletic shirts, uh, to help with that too. Ooh, yeah, this is another good thing. Pentios makes it easy to remove ticks because they can't get through it as easily. And those of you who followed my adventures driving back today, and I, or yesterday more, it was more yesterday. Today I was just ready to be home. Um, the And today it was all along I-35, which is boring as hell. Uh, anyway, the, yeah, wood ticks. I'm constantly going through the tall grass and everything. Excuse me. So, you know, you don't want... To pick up wood duck, up uh, wood ducks, wood ticks, especially up where there's Lyme's disease. Uh, cuddle duds. I'm not familiar with that, but if you're riding motocross in the winter, you, yeah, I'm, I'm sure you mastered the art of staying warm. I remember my motorcycle. I used to hug the motor to get heat from it. Oh wow. Okay, eight fifty-seven. You know. About 200 miles out yet, I was thinking, I shouldn't have said I was going to do the show because I am tired. I want to spend the evening with my family. I got laundry and unpacking and all that stuff to do. Actually, Kathleen, I do want wood ducks because they're tasty. Anyway, so, but I'd already said, yeah, I was going to do the show. And I wanted to talk about it because, um, you know, it's, it's a useful thing, especially if you get the summer vacations stuff coming up. Like I said, most of this especially the sleeping in rest areas and Walmarts, things like that. This is really single person road warrior type stuff. If you got a family with you, uh, you know, if you have enough room and people are willing to do it, okay. Um, I doubt my family would. I don't think Mrs. Weather would. She, you know, needs her shower and all that. Um, there are a lot of trucks. Oh, oh. Uh, one other thing, where to get gas. Uh, there is an app called Gas Buddy that looks and tells you what the price of the different gas gasoline is at, you know, the, the gas stations in your area. And that's good. Um, usually though, I have my phone playing music and so forth. And if it's just you alone, you don't want to be trying to do an app, obviously, while you're driving. Loves, 
truck stops and uh, Flying J and Pilot. Loves Flying J and Pilot truck stops generally across the nation have the lowest gasoline along the interstates. Uh, Shell and Exxon and Sinclair and all those uh, will be often as much as 20 cents more than you will find it at Loves and Flying J and the uh, Pilot. Okay, 8.59. I think this is a good place to stop. So uh, coming up, I don't know what's going to happen next week. Uh, I'm going to try and see if I can get Marvin on, my coworker, friend, good buddy, adventure buddy, who does the uh, – he goes over to Africa every other year and helps repair wells or dig wells for different villages to improve their water supply. And then he goes climbs Mount Kilimanjaro which is cool. Oh yeah. Okay. So that's what uh, I want to throw this up here too. Uh, showers. So a number of truck stops have showers, but they really are limited to actual truck drivers. It's best, you know, if there aren't any truck drivers, you can ask if there's anyone waiting, but usually there's kind of a, a line of truck drivers waiting. So I personally do not want to take off truck drivers. So I don't shower at those. I just go without showering. Um, I'll do a scout bath. Uh, that's what I call it. There's a less polite form of it, but you know, some baby wipes and, you know, take care of the important parts and away you go. But, uh, okay. Where was that? Okay. I am going to stop now because otherwise I'm going to talk forever. See the tribe tomorrow at Donut Shop at the beginning of the world. I have another book I want to add to the list of the ones that uh, Mrs. Weather and many where they're talked about today. And they did a great job while I was gone. Um, thank you all for 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 you know being there with them and everything. Um, awesome. Yeah, I'm gonna go. I don't know what I'm going to do now, but uh, it's going to be with my family. So thank you all. See you tomorrow morning. Until then, take care. And end broadcast. And end broadcast. <laughs>